Welcome back to Educator.com. Today's lesson is on objects. So, objects are a pure object-oriented language. Um, what happens is everything in Ruby is an object, as, as we've gone through in other, uh, other lessons. All values are objects, and there's no distinction between primitive types and object types. And all objects inherit from an object. Now, the reason on this third part uh, we say there's no distinction between primitive types and object types, um, if you come from other languages, and you're looking at int, int values or even uh, booleans. Usually they have a primitive type for that, but in, in Ruby, you know that you already have your true class, you have your false class, you have your integer class, your boolean class, so everything is still just an object itself. So uh, for, for this slide, we're going to talk about object references. Whenever you're coding in Ruby, you're not actually making code for an object. You're actually making the code and developing the code for the object reference. And that's, that's what it is here. So every time you're programming, you're actually using a reference of the code. You're instantiating the code, creating a constructor, and you're working with a reference of it. Um, especially if we're working with uh, the the ready the built-in Ruby core. Um, so this is that's why it's here. I say this is what we work with um, when we're working with the Ruby core. Any of the Ruby core libraries, we're working with references because we're not creating the actual classes for this. It's already been created. We're just using those classes to do our development in our code. So what we do is uh, we actually just do the updates, the modifications, and the creations for those references. Um, so we have an example here. Uh, what we're going to do is first uh, we, we we're going to create an array.new. Um, it's going to be st stored as an array object to fruits. And uh, you notice here, what we're doing is we're creating another value called foods that equals fruits. What this does is it's going it's to copy, uh, copy the reference to foods. So you'll notice here on the next line, we do a foods.push apple. So it stores an apple into the foods array. And then you do a dot push cherries, which also pushes it into that foods array. So we, we take a look now. We have our array here with apple and cherries. Now, uh, if you print that array out, the food and fruits will have the same array. But um, what happens if, if you create a new array with foods, you'll notice you print foods and fruits. They're actually different references now. One's pointing to a, a extension new array object, and another one still has this apples and cherries. Um, so let's just uh, let's see it in action so you have a better idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to launch the IRB. And uh, let's go ahead and use that first example. So we have our empty array of fruits. Now I'm going to point foods to fruits. So we have a reference. Again, empty array. Now let's go ahead and just push those uh, elements there. Notice we're, we're chaining the elements together. So we're actually doing two statements at once. 
So now you see if we do foods, there's two elements in the array. And we can go ahead and compare foods, fruits. And you notice they both have the same element. But if I do on the foods, I create a new array. Now it has a different reference. So when I do the print, right there, you notice the foods is empty, and the fruit still has the two elements there. So this one here, the array.new, this is just the empty array. So that's what it points to now. Now, as you just saw, we, were, we create a new object. We use the con constructor. Um, that's what we're going to talk about next is with this new method. Um, we can create new objects and we're working with a reference as a, because we're not actually building the object. We're, we're working with references every time we're programming. So here we're going to allocate memory for the new object. And then we invoke the initialize method. When you call that new, there is no new method in the class itself. So it's actually using a class called initialize. So for this my first class dot new. This one's actually going to look at your method initialize here. Your code. And so uh, let's see a live example of that in action. Now, this it goes into the my first class, and it gets instantiated with new. And notice that there's zero arguments here. 